So this one these winding up. Yep. It's always safer on a clock without maintaining power to stop the pendulum before winding it. Slip into time and I've just been listening to a really good podcast. It's uh, Fifth Wrist Radio, and uh, the guests were Nick and Josh Hacko. And if you want inspiring in this trade, you really need to give them a listen. Really um, inspiring story. The uh, and I love the way they uh, blow the lid open on the uh, blow the lid off the whole Swiss watch industry and the uh, big watch houses not supplying parts and all of that story. Um, I think it's it's really worth really worth spending a bit of time just to. Just having a listen. Great podcast to listen to while you're pottering around in the workshop, like I'm doing at the moment. I'm just uh, making a uh, hardened or will be hardened filing jig for the chronometer escape wheel that I'm cutting at the moment. When this video comes out on the uh, chronometer escape wheel, which will be in uh, probably in a few weeks time yet, you'll get an idea of just how much is involved in making one wheel. It's uh, a real indication of, you know, why these kinds of uh, repairs are so expensive. Because it's not just making the part itself, it's all the preparation work that leads up to making the part. In this case, there's numerous jigs, filing jigs, cutting holders uh, that have to be made to lead up to the point where we can actually then cut the wheel. So I hope you all enjoyed last week's uh, vlog style video. I'm going to continue making them in the this sort of informal um, uh, chat to the camera vlog style because it's uh, a way of as I said last week it's a way of giving you a little bit more of an insight into what's going on without you having to wait for the edited videos and the edited videos can take quite a while so it fills the gap nicely This is the filing guide for the crossings for the chronometer escape wheel that I'm just finishing off now. I'm going to take it over and harden it in a moment. And then it'll be most of the things will be ready then in the prep work to cut the chronometer escape wheel. On the subject of the chronometer escape wheel, you can see here, these are 
all tools and jigs that I've either used or am going to use uh, to cut the wheel. This is the wheel and these are the two blanks that I've made just so that I've got a spare on hand. This is a filing guide which will give me the internal diameter of the crossings. It will go in there. Uh, this is the uh, crossings filing guide that will go inside that. So those two combined, as you can see, will give the give the shape of the crossings and will mean that it's fairly a fairly quick process to cross out a wheel. It'll also mean that uh, I can cross them both out the same. It's not I don't have to sort of do all the marking out and everything twice. It also, in theory, will give me a, a sharper corner in here, as long as I'm skillful on the file. I think I showed the um, the rest of the uh, filing jig uh, for the uh, the other half of the the ring there. Uh, this was a um, super glue chuck that I made to make the the blanks, and then that's the holder, and then this was a uh, another super glue holder that I I used for gluing in the recess of the wheel so that I could machine the back side of it. So you get an idea of just what's involved in cutting one chronometer escape wheel. You've got to make all of these tools first and I'm not finished yet. On the subject of the YouTube videos, this is my camera, which I hope is now not an X camera. That, those blobs that you can see yeah, get something. Yeah, those blobs that you can see here. These are super glue, unfortunately, that was flicked up onto the camera off the uh, lathe after I'd um, used a super glue chuck, and the glue wasn't quite set. So uh, that's potentially a problem. I'm thinking of using some acetone. It's just about the only thing I can think of to get it off, but I don't know what that'll do to the anti-reflective glare on the lens. So uh, I don't know. Wish me luck, might be time for a new camera. Just try a little bit of acetone and see, uh, see what happens. Doesn't seem to be destroying the um, anti-reflective film. So hopefully you give it time to soften the super glue. We might be getting somewhere now. Right, the glue's off, let's see how much damage we've done to the rest of the lens in the process. I think got away with that. Yes, I'm lucky. I think we got away with that. I don't do a huge amount of watchmaking at the moment, but I do still do the odd vintage watch from time to time. And this rather nice early Verso came in and the hands were in a pretty poor state. They were lacking any kind of luminous compound and they had been bent around quite a lot and just generally were in poor state. So I managed to straighten them up uh, reasonably well. I was quite pleased with the outcome. Let's try and zoom in for you. And then I tinted some luminous compound to complement the, uh, the compound that was on the dial. So I know they're not perfect, but I was quite pleased with how they came out. I think it's a uh, fairly uh, sensitive, uh, sensitive repair to the hands. So I was quite pleased with that. And this watch is one I did recently, which is just finishing testing as well. And it's really worthy of showing because the engraving on this is absolutely exquisite. I don't think I've seen a pocket watch with engraving quite as nice as this. It really is quite something. And on the reverse, 
The floral engraving is quite stunning. Now, what do you make of that? And if the engraving on the outside of the case wasn't enough for you, it's got a completely over the top dial as well. This watch actually came in predominantly for dial and work, dial and hands work, because the dial had been cleaned uh, rather poorly um, with a, a chemical that hadn't been neutralised and it had gone completely black. Uh, hence the loss to the paintwork and the numerals, which is all, you know, it's a shame. Uh, but the uh, the client wanted it just cleaning as best as possible, so that's what I've done and, and it's come up nicely. Uh, the hands had actually been completely rusted up by the, uh, uh, by the chemicals, so I had to clean off all the rust and polish them up and re-blue them and they, uh, they came up rather nicely as well. But uh, there we go, it's a rather nice uh, watch. I'll just show you the movement. A little bit more of the engraving there. And we can swing it open, you can see the movement. Which is, again is in lovely crisp condition. So I don't do many watches these days, but this is the type of thing that I do. So I've got some stickers finally arrived. I think I mentioned them last week and uh, I'm quite pleased with these. They're quite nice. A friend of mine uh, designed the logo for me, uh, my name in the style of the engraving of Thomas Tompion. He's actually done two styles for me. One of the, the, the other style is the style that I'm probably going to use to engrave my uh, signature on clocks that I make in the future. Uh, but this is a slightly more stylized version, um, but as used uh, by Tompion. So if you can imagine the the T's, that's um, that's Tompion, and then uh, obviously another T there. So anyway, enough about that. Um, if you want to get hold of one of these stickers to put on your sticker wall, uh, there are two ways that you can do it. You can either uh, be uh, have a sticker of your own and send me a, a a sticker to go on my sticker wall and I'll do swaps with you or you can uh, sign up to um, to follow me on Patreon and then all of my patrons will get a sticker. The sticker wall is starting to uh, to fill up a little bit there's you can see the my new sticker up there so if you're um, another maker and you would like to send me a sticker to go up on the wall here uh, then I'll send you one of mine. Well, that's it for another Workshop Wednesday video log. Uh, this has been episode two. I've been speaking to uh, a couple of my uh, colleagues in the uh, horological YouTube sphere. Uh, one is James Palmer and another is Ruben Schutz. And they both have YouTube channels which are definitely worth checking out. Uh, they're both... Uh, uh, really talented uh, watchmakers who are on the up and they're both going to uh, chronicle their work on making their uh, handmade watches on YouTube so really exciting to uh, to follow them along in their journey and speaking to them we've we've decided together to um, uh, to do these uh, video logs and we're going to do a different day of the week each so uh, James is doing Mondays, I'm doing Wednesday, and Ruben is going to do Fridays. So that means that you've got a uh, uh, a week of horological content um, uh, every week to look forward to. So uh, it's only a couple of days before your next horological hit. So uh, please do check out their channels. I'll, I'll put the links in the uh, in the description below uh, for their channels. And uh, I'll also um, put a playlist on my channel so that uh, all of the videos will go onto that playlist as they come out. I think that's it for this week. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to uh, leave a, a thumbs up like. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe uh, so that you don't miss a video. Thanks very much.